the Nightly Business Report. Good evening. Tonight, Foreign Minister Ali Sabri says that Sri Lanka will wrap up talks with international bondholders on its restructuring process in a few weeks. Ministry of Transport announces an electric ticketing system for public transport services, including trains to be introduced by the end of this year. Stock market continues the downtrend and shows persistent weakness with no indications of reversal in sight. And Uber announces the launch of its global flagship sustainability product, Uber Green in Colombo, enabling riders to book environmentally friendly rides. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said today that Sri Lanka will wrap up talks with international bondholders on its restructuring process in a few weeks, which is a major step for the country to emerge from its worst financial crisis in decade. He said that Sri Lanka will also seek to balance its ties with giant neighbour India and China to ensure that there is no difference in dealing with the two. Sabri said in an interview at the Reuters next conference in Singapore, that hopefully the country will conclude talks within a couple of weeks. He answered this when asked when the nation's bond restructuring efforts with creditors will be finished. He said that towards the end of this month, officially we are done and dusted with the restructuring process, then of course in line with that, they need to start payment. Sri Lanka secured a provisional agreement with some of its bondholders to move forward restructuring about 12.5 billion US dollars of international bonds last week, but now needs the rest of private creditors and international monetary fund to also agree. The country, which has 37 billion US dollars in external debt, clinched an agreement with its official creditors, including Japan, China, and India, in late June to restructure 10 billion US dollars in debt. In total, the debt rework estimated to save Sri Lanka 8 billion dollars in write offs and delay capital repayments by at least four years. Joining an interview with Singaporean news channel CNA, Minister Sabri stated that the country have averted a crisis and stabilize the situation, but growth is needed and right now the country's target is to get back to growth and improve the living standards of the Sri Lankan citizens. Uh, what had happened in the past that there we had a terrible economic crisis, we have managed to avert a further crisis on that, we have got it back and stability there, but growth had not taken place. So right now our focus is to get back to growth so that we improve the living standard and also the income and the salaries of our people. So that will probably, that's the current challenge right now. In order to win that challenge, we need more investment coming in, particularly to the economy in various sectors. Sri Lanka is in the process of amending its Telecommunications Regulatory Commission Act to accommodate Starlink satellite system found by billionaire head of SpaceX and Tesla. The island nation has already granted preliminary approval for Starlink to provide satellite-based internet services in the country following a formal public consultation process. The Sri Lanka Telecommunications Bill was passed without a vote in Parliament today with amendments. Following the debate on the second reading of the bill, amendments were added during the committee stage. Minister of Technology presented the bill to the Parliament on the 10th May 2024 in order to amend the Sri Lankan Telecommunications Act No. 25 of 1991 and this act was amended after 28 years. This amendment has allowed for necessary regulation to create a more competitive and fair market in the telecommunications sector in accordance with the accepted standards of the world. State Technology Minister Kanaka Herat said that this new amendment that will introduce infrastructure service license, telecommunication service license and cable landing station license. He told reporters at a media briefing in Colombo yesterday that Starlink comes under telecommunications service license. This move came after President Ranil Vikramasinghe met Musk in the sideline the 10th World Water Forum in Indonesia two months ago. However, Sri Lanka's TRC law has no provision to grant license for a third party to operate telecommunications services. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka today called for an oral public consultation over the second electricity tariff revision. The oral comment session of the public consultation regarding the electricity tariff revision proposed by the Ceylon Electricity Board for 2024 was held today from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Bandaranaika Memorial International Conference Hall. This public consultation will be held in accordance with the procedure of public consultation as per Section 17 of the Sri Lanka Public Utilities Commission Act. 
After the public consultation, the Commission will announce the final decision on 15th of July. Secretary to the Ministry of Transport and Highways Engineer Ranjit Ganganath Rupasinghe announced that an electronic ticketing system for public transport services, including trains, will be introduced by the end of this year. Addressing the press briefing titled Two Years of Progress and Advancement held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday, the Secretary noted that despite the economic crisis, the government has allocated 390 billion rupees over the past two years for road development projects initiated before 2022. Of this amount, 300 billion rupees has been paid to contractors and 90 billion has been used for debt repayment. An electronic ticketing system for public transport services, including trains, is planned to be introduced before the end of this year. The entire highway toll payment system will also be made electronic within a few months. He stated that it is important to note that the success of the government's debt restructuring program has been particularly satisfactory for the Ministry of Highways. Adding on, he said that this success will enable the restart of many projects that were halted during the last crisis and discussions have already begun for the early commencement of Phase 1 of the Central Expressway. Moreover, Phases 2 and 3 of the Central Expressway and the Ruanpur Expressway project are expected to begin soon. The bilateral discussions underway regarding the completion of the elevated highways project in Atrugiria through financial investments. The Welfare Benefits Board has informed that the information census of the second phase of the Aswesama Welfare Benefit Program, implemented as per the instructions of President Ranil Wickremesinghe, will be conducted from the 15th of June to the 30th of June. In addition to more than 1.8 million people who qualified in the first phase, another 450,924 applications have been received for the second phase and among them the identification of those who are eligible for the payment of welfare benefits is to be completed within this month. A total of 1,854,000 individuals have qualified for the first phase of the ASVESMA program with the government allocating 58.5 billion rupees for this phase. The Welfare Benefits Board has provided an opportunity for those who missed or could not apply during the first stage to reapply. Let's go for a short commercial break. More updates coming right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The stock market suffers another day of losses extending a prolonged downtrend. Both indices close at lows, dampening investor sentiment. To get the breakdown of today's trading performance, let's join with Anjali Matthews connecting with us from First Capital Holdings. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange saw another day of downturn as investors maintained a bearish sentiment where the all-share price index closed the day at 11,785, losing 57 points, and the S&P SL20 index also experienced a downturn, closing at 3,438, losing 31 points. The market overall experienced bearish sentiment, where the participation of high net worth individuals was low, and retail investors also exhibited selling sentiment while the banking sector and index heavyweights contributed negatively towards the index. Several sectors also experienced price declines across the board. Turnover also decreased slightly from the previous day and stood at Rs 483 million, marking a 73% decrease from the monthly average, standing at rupees, which was at Rs 1.8 billion, where the capital goods sector contributed 38% to the overall turnover and also dominated for the fourth consecutive season, while the banking, food, beverage and tobacco sectors jointly contributed to 30% of overall turnover. The top gainers in today's market included SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Industrial Asphalt and Blue Diamond, while the top losers included Royal Palms, Hotel Seagiria and Lighthouse Hotel. 
With AWPLR showing a slight reversal last week after five consecutive weeks, let's have a look at how the interest rate movement will affect consumption and future growth of the economy. For this, let's connect with Vinodini Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The AWPR bounced back after a five-week dip, increasing by 26 basis points to 9.04% as of July 5th. However, the AWLR decreased to 12.81% by the end of May 2024 from 13.14% in April 2024. However, the sizable spread between AWPR and AWLR has affected private sector credit growth, which has continued to remain weak in recent months. We believe the recent increase in AWPR to be a temporary shock and with interest rates now adjusting upwards, we anticipate minimal impact on consumer credit. Looking ahead to the second half of the year, we expect an improvement in credit demand. We project a 7.5% increase in private sector credit for the year and as consumer credit strengthens, we foresee a corresponding boost in economic growth. Moreover, the outstanding credit card balance of licensed commercial banks decreased by 1.9 billion rupees to 149.7 billion rupees in May, following a rise in April. In the first five months of the year, the total outstanding credit card balance slipped by 1.7 billion rupees. The increase in April was due to higher card usage during festivities and extended holidays, but the decline in May suggests continued reluctance to use credit cards due to high rates that are long overdue for correction. Despite an 800 basis points drop in the prime lending rate over the year, the rate on unpaid card balance remains around 28% despite improved financial conditions. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today, recouping some overnight losses as traders held out for dovish signals from an upcoming testimony from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. Spot gold rose 0.4% to $2,367.97 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August jumped 0.5% to $2,374.40 an ounce. The yellow metal retreated yesterday but was still sitting on some gains through the past week as a swathe of soft labor market readings pushed up expectations for an interest rate cut in September. A weak dollar also aided gold advance. Gold benefited from increased speculation over an interest rate cut in September, especially as the dollar retreated. Oil prices eased to a one-week low as Hurricane Barrel shut U.S. refineries and ports along the Gulf of Mexico. And on hopes a possible ceasefire deal in Gaza could reduce worries about global crude supply disruptions. Oil prices edged lower on Monday, reversing course after four weeks of gains, as hopes of a ceasefire deal in Gaza eased worries of tightening supply. Talks over a U.S. plan to end the nine-month-old war are being mediated by Qatar and Egypt. The price of both Brent crude and U.S. West Texas intermediate crude were down roughly a percent each as of midday Monday. But the slides were kept in check by the potential impact of Hurricane Beryl currently wreaking havoc across the Texas coast. Texas produces more oil and natural gas than any other area of the country. Port closures there could temporarily halt crude and liquefied natural gas exports, oil shipments to refineries, and gasoline deliveries. And the storm threat is just beginning. Government forecasters expect up to seven major hurricanes this season, more than double the annual average of three. In addition to hurricanes, U.S. refineries are also contending with scorching heat, which can lead to equipment malfunctions and reduction in refining capacity. The U.S. supplies more oil and gas globally than any other country in the world, with a refining capacity of over 18 million barrels a day. Half of that is produced along the Gulf Coast, which is particularly susceptible to storms and high temperatures. 
Today's oil prices decreased as well with ongoing diplomatic efforts to achieve a ceasefire agreement in Gaza and uncertainty over the timing of the U.S. Federal Reserve's interest rate cut. International benchmark Brent crude traded at $85.57 per barrel, a decrease of 0.20% from the closing price of $85.75 per barrel in the previous trading session. The American benchmark West Texas Intermediate traded at $82.12 per barrel at the same time, a 0.25% fall from the previous session that closed at $82.33 per barrel. Ceasefire talks in the Middle East, which is home to a vast majority of global oil reserves, relieve some supply concerns among market players and put downward pressure on prices. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the US dollar today, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has dropped from 300 rupees and 2 cents to 299 rupees and 79 cents, while the selling rate has also reduced from 309 rupees and 22 cents to 309 rupees and 12 cents. Now let's have a look on how the rupee behaved against the other global currencies. A short commercial break now, news from the corporate world coming on the other side. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Uber announced the launch of its global flagship sustainability product, Uber Green, in Colombo. This will enable riders to book environmentally friendly rides with just a few taps on their Uber app. With an aim to accelerate its transition to zero emission mobility by 2040 in Sri Lanka, Uber plans to expand on-demand electric vehicle rides with Uber Green. The option of choosing Uber Green will be available to riders who can now request a green ride across the city, including rides to and from the Bandarnaka International Airport. The new service was announced by Uber's Chief Financial Officer Prashant Mahendra Raja, who is visiting the country. Uber has committed to become a zero-emissions mobility platform by 2030 in Europe and North America and globally by 2040. EV drivers on Uber are going electric five times faster than the general public and in turn delivering up to four times the emissions benefits compared to regular motorists, highlighting the potential for the ride-sharing industry to accelerate the transition to electrification. The Science-Based Targets Initiative has also approved Uber's near and long terms. The Science-Based Targets Initiative has also approved Uber's near and long-term science-based emissions reduction targets, making them one of the first 30 US-based companies to have such targets approved. Dialogue ASEAN PLC continues its commitment to innovation with the launch of virtual reality bungee jumping and VR cycling experiences at the iconic centre. Developed in collaboration with the engineering faculty of the University of Moratua and local content creators, these VR experiences offer thrilling and highly realistic stimulations for customers. The VR bungee jumping experience allows participants to feel the adrenaline rush of a jump from the renowned Lotus Tower Colombo, complete with the sensation of freefall and stunning aerial views in a safe environment. The VR cycling experience takes participants on a scenic ride through the beautiful landscapes providing a lifelike adventure with the visual and auditory sensations of riding through Sri Lanka's picturesque highlands. By incorporating localized content, Dialogue ensures that users can connect with and appreciate the beauty of Sri Lanka's iconic landmarks and landscapes. Meiro, a leading customer data platform, has announced its strategic expansion into the Sri Lankan market following a successful 3 million US dollar pre-series funding round. 
This round was led by Southeast Asian venture capital firm Wavemaker Partners with significant participation from angel investors at Singapore-based Angel Central. With the newly secured funding, Meru plans to leverage the potential of the Sri Lankan market, aiming to hire skilled professionals locally to support its growth. The company's expansion into Sri Lanka underscores its commitment to driving digital transformation and enhancing customer experience personalization in the region. Sri Lanka presents a promising landscape for digital innovation and Miro is poised to empower businesses with cutting-edge solutions that harness the power of customer data. By enabling businesses to revolutionize their marketing strategies through AI-driven personalization, Miro claims to foster deeper customer engagement and significantly improve marketing efficiency. Mayro specializes in first-party data analysis, enabling brands to recognize and track customers across multiple touchpoints, integrating CRM principles with behavioral data from mobile apps and websites. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today amid growing bets on lower US interest rates, with Japan's Nikkei 225 index hitting a record high while Chinese markets lagged on persistent concerns over a trade war. The Nikkei 225 index was the best performer in Asia trade today, rising over 1% to a record high of 41,421.50 points. Other Asian markets also rose. Gains in tech helped South Korea's Kospi at 0.4%, while Australia's ASX200 surged 0.7% as it rebounded from two days of losses. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indices fell 0.2% and 0.4% respectively, while losses in mainland stocks dragged Hong Kong's Hang Seng down 0.4%. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq achieved new record high closes as investors anticipated upcoming inflation data, comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and the beginning of the quarterly earnings session. Market participants are closely watching these developments to gauge the future direction of the economy and monetary policy. Monday brought more record high closes for the S&P 500 and Nasdaq as investors awaited fresh inflation data, comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, and the start of quarterly earnings season. The Dow dipped marginally, while the S&P gained a tenth of a percent and the Nasdaq added almost three-tenths. Traders will closely monitor Powell's semi-annual testimony before Congress starting Tuesday and then scrutinize consumer price data due on Thursday for clues on the timing of possible interest rate cuts. It was another good day for shares of AI darling NVIDIA, which gained nearly 2 percent. Other chip stocks rallied, including Intel, which jumped over 6 percent, and advanced micro devices added 4 percent, lifting the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index nearly 2 percent. Shares of Paramount Global fell more than 5 percent after it agreed on Sunday to merge with Skydance Media, scripting a new chapter for one of Hollywood's oldest studios. And Boeing shares gained ground after the plane maker agreed to plead guilty to a criminal fraud conspiracy charge and pay a fine of $243.6 million to resolve a U.S. Justice Department investigation into two fatal 737 MAX crashes. Well, that's it from us at the Nile Business Report for the day. Tune in again tomorrow for more updates. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dunne. Have a good night.